Today's video will explain the chain of responsibility design pattern. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The chain of responsibility design pattern is useful when more than one part of the program can handle a different update or issue. This video will define the chain of responsibility design pattern, show how to implement it in a UML class diagram, and show how to integrate it to solve many interesting problems. The chain of responsibility design pattern is a communication strategy where multiple handlers get a chance to consume a message or pass it on to the next handler in the chain. Essentially, it is a linked list of handlers, each of which is given an opportunity to handle a request. If the request is handled, then the process terminates. If the request cannot be handled, then it's passed to the next node in the linked list. So before we implement the design pattern, imagine a company of soldiers. And right now, if anyone has any question, they talk directly to the captain, which is really, really difficult. Instead, the corporal should talk to the squad leader. Now, if the squad leader can handle it, then we're finished. The answer goes back to the corporal. But if the squad leader cannot handle it, it gets passed up to the sergeant, and the sergeant can handle most of these, and then it passes it back to the corporal if it's handled. But if not, then it's gonna pass it up to the lieutenant. Lieutenant will deal with these, but of course, if something the lieutenant cannot deal with, and then and only then will it make it up to the captain. In this way, there's an order in which things are handled. So we'll start with an object diagram. First, Private Pyle will try to deal with the complaint. Um, if he cannot, then the squad leader Smith will try to handle it. If that fails, then Lieutenant Lewis will give it a go. And finally, only the most severe complaints arrive on Captain Campbell's desk. So we have Private Pyle. And if Private Pyle cannot deal with it, he'll send it to Squad Leader Smith. And if Squad Leader cannot deal with it, he'll send it off to Lieutenant Lewis, and then finally off to Captain Campbell. Now notice the vast majority of the complaints get dealt with early in the chain, and only the most severe one make it to Captain Campbell's desk. All right, let's take a look at the class diagram. We're gonna start with the client, and the client is gonna have a handler reference. So we have to have the abstract handler. Now, how is the client gonna be related to the abstract handler? through association, and there'll be exactly one. Now, the abstract handler will have a pointer to the next abstract handler, and this is how we do the linked list. So there'll be zero if this happens to be the end node, and one if there's a node after us. Now, we're gonna have a set next, so we can add a new element to the linked list, and we're gonna have the handle request. Now, notice the handle request is a pure virtual function, which means the abstract handler is an abstract class, hence the name abstract handler. But so if I have a pure virtual function, I must have at least one drive class. In this case, I'm gonna have two, concrete handler one and concrete handler two. So let's take a look at the pseudocode for initialize. I'm gonna create three different handlers and I'm gonna set next, set next, set next. And that's how I'm gonna build my linked list. And my pseudocode for set next is I'm gonna say the next pointer is my abstract handler. And of course, when I want to handle a request, I first got to see if I am able to handle the request. In other words, am I qualified to deal with this event? If the answer is yes, then I will call handle request here. Otherwise, I'll call handle request on the next one in the chain. Now, it turns out there is another easier way to do this. Instead of the client having a single pointer to the abstract handler, I can instead have a collection of abstract handlers. So therefore, I'm not gonna have one by aggregation, but rather I'm gonna have many. My abstract handler is not gonna have a pointer to the next abstract handler. In fact, it'll have nothing at all. And then I'm also gonna get rid of my set next. Now, the key is my handle request is now gonna to have to return a bool. What this means is I'm gonna loop through all the abstract handlers that are in my collection, and then if it ever returns true, then I stop there rather than move on to the next. So let's go back to our main core example here. So I have an individual who may log a complaint. And so I need to have a complaint type by aggregation. And this is gonna have a pointer to the next complaint. So it's gonna be zero if this is the last one in the list or one if there's more than one. And then I'm gonna have Captain Campbell's complaint inbox, Lewis's complaint inbox and other words. And all these are done by inheritance. So my pseudocode, so Captain Campbell has no next, so he, the buck stops with him. He's the last person in the list. Lewis complaint, after him comes Captain Campbell. And Smith complaint, after him comes Lewis's Campbell. So here's a second example. A calendar application is tasked with moving to-do items onto a schedule. Each item has a duration and a priority one through five. And the algorithm should first schedule all priority one items, then move on to priority two items, and so on. So we have the client, which is gonna have the schedule, and the scheduler, which is gonna to point to the next one. 
So clearly the client is going to have zero or one scheduler. Next is going to point to itself. And then we have schedule one priority, schedule two priority, schedule three priority, and so on. All these by inheritance. First of all, we're going to handle everything that's priority one. And then if there's anything left, then schedule priority two. Then if there's anything left, then schedule priority three. And finally, if we're lucky, we might be able to do priority five things at the very end. We can also do this with the alternative implementation. Instead of pointing to one, we're going to point to many, and the scheduler will then get rid of its linked list. This is example 44.2 in the chain of responsibility section of the message passing chapter of the software design textbook.